Hi, so this is lesson three, and in lesson three we will be working with both HTML and CSS. We will be covering divs, classes, wrappers, floating, margins, and a few other things. So if you want spe more specifics of everything we'll be covering, it will be in the description box. So you can look there. Um, in the meantime, these are our two documents that we've done so far in lesson one and lesson two. So lesson one we covered the HTML, and this is the document that we have from it. And in lesson two, we covered the CSS, and this is the document we have from it. If you want the information, if you haven't been following along, and you want the information to follow along, you can find the text that we used in the description box in lesson one, and mark it up as you want to. Um, if you're jumping to lesson three and not watching lesson one and two, chances are you already know how to mark it up, so you don't need to follow along the video, but if you would like to and you don't really know, you can feel free to, otherwise you can use your own text and mark it up as you want to. Again, it's really up to you, so don't worry about it. Um, now, let's just discuss divs for a second, and then we'll move on and you know go through everything that, as I mentioned. So, div stands for divider, and what this does is you're able to take it and divide up your different information. So if you want columns, you can do that, or uh, most people use it for the header, the footer, and if they want columns, they do that or whatever. So you usually end up with about three to five divs per page. So that's what that is. Now, we're going to go through that, and uh, I'm going to show you that. But before I do, I'm going to explain classes also. So a class is a way to divide things up instead of dividing it up into columns and whatnot. It's let's say I want, and this is what we're going to be doing. I want to make every other one of the lists. I want to make it red. So I'm going to give them a class, and then I'm going to be able to control those and not all of them by like not every list, but only the ones that I want to control in order to cause the effect that I want. So you could actually do a lot of things with classes and you know at times there is a need to treat them as if they are divs, but you know they're not bound to what divs are. So they're really um, a lot more versatile. Now a big difference between divs and classes are that you can have one div with the same name and you can have, and that's it, in one document, one div, same name. Um, if you want other divs, then you have to give them other names. However, if you want a class, you're going to be able to put the same name to as many classes as you want. So this way you could control them. So let's say I wanted every single tag in this document to become red. Then I will, you know, there's a lot more of a simple way to do this, but I can give each of them the same class and I could turn them all red. So that's what that is. Um, also, unless the class is within the div, it will listen to a div before it will listen to a class, like when the website, not the website, when the internet reads the website. So it kind of has this hierarchy going on, but if it is nested within it, it will listen to it first. So I uh, hope that's not too confusing, and as you experiment, you'll see what I mean. So that's that. So let's get started. Now, what we are going to start off with is the div wrapper. So what that is is you contain you have a container that kind of wraps around the whole thing and this way instead of having things float to infinity then you just have it like this. You just have it in a nice neat container and I'm just going to show you what the benefits are um, before and after. So here as you see this is just keeps running on and on until the end of the document and if I make it smaller it will just you know kind of adjust to it and it kind of like decreases and whatever so and becomes more like squished so the whole idea with a wrapper is that it shouldn't go on to infinity so we are going to do div and as I said this is a specific kind of wrap, uh, div it's known as the wrapper so wrapper and we're just going to close that and now a good, a really good habit to be in is to have your closing div right here at the bottom if it's for your wrapper so you don't get confused. This is just something I came up with. I don't know if other people do it, but I recommend it to a friend of mine who uh, is really a messy <laughs> web designer. And 
this really helps him also. So this way, because you do have a number of divs within a document, uh, this way you don't need to worry about accidentally deleting the closing div for the wrapper and having a bunch of problems on your hands. So we're just going to save this and let's go see what difference it made. So we're going to um, refresh this. And you see, it really didn't make a difference. It did push it down a little bit because now it realizes this is a subcategory. It's not just the body. So it's giving you a little bit of margins for the bot, uh, for the wrapper. But that's really all it did, and it's really not a big deal, not very noticeable. So that is because we have to give it a class. And by the class, we control the width and a bunch of stuff. So we're going to talk about the stuff that you control with it. Now, in order to tell it, because these are only tags, in order to tell it, you know, this is a div tag, we are using this random name, then we have to give it a marking. So this is the marking for the div, and this is a pound or hashtag, and we just write wrapper. And then it's treated like any other tag, but it needs, this is how to symbolize it's a div. So this way the computer knows what to read. So we are going to give it a width, and we're going to do 960 pixels. Now, it's this is the perfect number. You should always use 960 pixel, uh, pixels, no more, no less. Well, a little less if you want to go down like 20 points or something like that. But the reason for this is, well, one thing, it's very easily divided by a number of numbers. So you don't need to worry about having things very uneven. It's very easy to make things even. But most importantly is it fits any type of screen. So whether you're working on a, a, a pat, a, a, Sorry. Whether you're working on an iPad or whether you're working on a tablet, a netbook, you know, a large screen, it will automatically fit. And since there are so many screens that are, you know, wider or taller, whatever, this really works nicely. So this really fits any screen size and it's really good for that. So you don't have to have a scroll bar on the bottom, which is just considered completely terrible. So Let's just refresh and see. And you see, now all of a sudden we have this like space over here. So it's saying, okay, I'm containing it, and this is the furthest it's going to go, and that's it. So that's pretty good. And But the thing is, it's kind of like a little off center. And honestly, I really like having things centered. I think most people do. It's more attractive to the eyes. So let's just center it. So we're going to do margin, and then we're going to do auto, which will automatically make it center and just have everything perfect. So there we go, and everything's now centered, and it looks a lot nicer and cleaner and neater. Now, let's say I want like 50 pixels on top. So we do 50 pixels, and the cool thing about this is if I do 50 pixels for the beginning, and everything else is auto, it will automatically merge on everything except for the top. Now, the reason for this is because the way this goes, you're able to have four different numbers in this and it will automatically follow it. The way it works is it goes clockwise from the top and then it goes down to the right and then the bottom and then the left. So we will show an example of this in a second, but for right now just take my word for it and this is the top and this is going to follow everything else just because that's the last thing stated. Or everything else is going to follow that rather. So you see now we're down, we've just refreshed and we're down 50 pixels. So that's really nice, and it's actually starting to come together nicely. So now what if I want the bottom to have 150 pixels? So I'm just going to do a space, because now the third thing is already getting to the bottom. I'm going to do 150 pixels. You really want to have to be careful, though, about um, making sure to write PX for pixels, because otherwise you're not going to be able to you know, get it to work at all and it just won't read it. And then I'm just going to do auto one more time so this way the left side is also auto margined and let's see, now we have 150 pixels underneath. So margins are really great to make just some space and make it look good and clean and that's really good and it works well. So that's that. Now let's do some classes to see how that looks. So here's our list and we're just going to do space inside the tag, do space class, and we're just going to call this red because red really makes sense. If you don't call it something that makes sense, you're going to have some problems that I had in the past. 
and what I had was I had I just like named anything anything so this way it would be able to be controlled but I didn't really think about going back into it so when I named it like one two three and then I had to go back in it like months later it's like okay what is this so it's really really important especially if other people might be working on it to name it things that make sense so since I want these to be red you know it makes sense to name it red now I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to do a class and to symbolize a class is a period so class red and we're just going to treat this again like any other tag and we're going to do color and we're going to pick red so as I've said in the past 